Hey, welcome to the Orlando Podcast. Surprisingly, some people have it. So that's part of my job is to create brand awareness uh, for BNI and to kind of spread the word and educate on a better way to network that really gets people results. Part of the reason I am so excited to take on this role, first of all, is that I have such enthusiasm about BNI. I became a member myself several years ago, and I have witnessed what it has done for small to medium business owners in terms of growth and success for their businesses. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Orlando Podcast. With me here today is Christine Moody. Hi, Christine. Thanks for being here. Hi, Tyler. I'm so happy to be here. Good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you too. Well, Christine, I want to go ahead and uh, get started the same way we do with everybody. So why is it that you do what you do? Well, first of all, I am in a relatively new position. I am the market development manager for Business Network International. So BNI, some people have heard of BNI. Surprisingly, some people haven't. So that's part of my job is to create brand awareness uh, for BNI and to kind of spread the word and educate on a better way to network that really gets people results. And um, so why do I do what I do? Um, Part of the reason I am so excited to take on this role, first of all, is that I have such enthusiasm about BNI. I became a member myself several years ago, and I have witnessed what it has done for small to medium business owners in terms of growth and success for their businesses. I've seen chiropractors have to like buy a new bigger building. I've seen uh, real estate agents go from, you know, a small little um, group of agents, you know, right after the crash to having founded two chapters with four members total in chapters and this, you know, just seeing their, their output and helping their clients be so, so tremendous. I've seen people's skill sets just really, because we're all about training as well, right? And, and their skill sets go from, you know, whether you have a roofer maybe or an electrician or somebody that's just never even talked to a group of people and to watch them flourish and really learn how to, to share and connect with other people about what they do and how to serve others as a way to help generate growth for their business just incredible to see all the different things. And then on top of all that, to watch people form lifelong business partnerships and friendships with people they maybe didn't know two months prior, right? And then down the road, they can't imagine not, they can't imagine being in business without that business professional alongside them and also the partnerships that are created. So a lot of different reasons, um, but it, it's just something I'm super enthusiastic about. Well, that's really cool. So you said it's relatively new. How did you get started with BNI or networking in general? Where did that all start? Right. So BNI, of course, has been around for 38 years. So that's kind of one of the exciting things about it is that it's a tried and tested platform. And by having, you know, so many members, I think we're at like 299,000 members worldwide, 788 or so right here in Central Florida. So you're able to kind of do studies and, and have data driven uh, solutions for people. So you're able to see what works and what doesn't work. But I moved to Florida about five years ago, and I was horrible at networking. And I'm a super extrovert. I love people, but it was my first time. I've worked corporate jobs. I've worked, you know, in the military. I've been worked for the state government and Department of Public Health. I've run nonprofits, but I'd never been a solopreneur. And I was stepping into that space for the first time. And I mean, I made so many mistakes networking, it's embarrassing. Like I didn't know anybody in, in Central Florida and I knew I had to get out there. So that wasn't my problem. But the way I went about it was just embarrassing is the best word. I like just don't even want to think about some of the mistakes I made. And so, you know, over time through joining BNI shortly after I moved here, first of all, it just expanded my my reach and my exposure. Sure. If you're a go-getter, sure. you can take advantage of having access to the entire region. Uh, but 
it, it just grew my friendships and I'm a person that needs to feel connected, but it also improved my skill set tremendously. Uh, and so if it can do it for me, it can do it for other people. But that's how I got involved. It's my first time stepping into a business. I have such respect now for people having been somebody that really was more of an, in a corporate slot for people that are having their own businesses. I'm just in awe and inspired by them every single day. And we love to do whatever we can to help support their growth. That's really cool. So uh, I heard you say that you came here about five years ago and you started as a solopreneur. What was that? Uh, what was that endeavor that you were undertaking? Sure. It was actually uh, direct marketing with a line of um, holistic supplements and hemp products and hemp based skincare and vitamins and, and supplements. Okay. And so, yeah, it was just, you know, you move to a new state. I didn't have any family or friends here. How am I supposed to get in front of people? Right. How do I meet people? Uh, and I tried a lot of different avenues, but B and I is what, what really worked for me. So tell me a little bit about, uh, your first experience with B and I and how, uh, and how it helped you start to become a better networker. You talked a lot about uh, some of the education. Give us give us some of the first things that you learned when you joined BNI about networking and, and how to do it more effectively. Okay, sure. So, so okay, we have to fess up some of the mistakes I made early on, right? So, you know, you feel like a lot of times you get coaching from other people, right? Particularly maybe in direct marketing, you know, it's just, you know, put yourself out there and, you know, hand a business card to everybody you see and tell them what you're about and what sets you apart. And I learned one of the very first lessons I learned is that networking is not about hunting, hunting for prospects, right? Networking is about farming and relationships, planting seeds, Givers gain is one of the core philosophies along with positive attitude and relationships with B and I. And so that was natural for me, but I really hadn't thought about it in terms of business. And so being of service to others, listening more than talking, asking questions, leading with how can I help? How can I help you? What are your greatest challenges? And then being that connector to help solve other people's problems creates a relationship that then becomes very, um, a, it's based on business, which is important. Um, and it becomes reciprocal. Yeah. And so, so those are some of the things I learned, but yeah, the old hunting versus farming thing, you know, plant the seeds, be of service. And then over time, you know, you got to nurture it. And over time it will come around because of intentionality and accountability that's built into, to be an I. That's one of the things everybody like, I know I should do networking, so they kind of go out and do what I call willy nilly networking, you know, which is what I was doing early on. Attend every event you can possibly be at, hand out a bunch of business cards and, you know, contact some people and hope that that led to business. And it really never did um, because it didn't have the reciprocal nature of the relationships. It didn't have the um, accountability too. but most importantly, the time you have to take time and let a relationship flourish before you are able and that's where the farming thing comes in it takes a season you know of developing a true relationship where you care equally about the other one being successful sure i totally get that so do you have any stories any really cool networking stories like i met this person and three years later this is how uh just because i continued to add value and farm it turned into this really great opportunity anything like that Hey, before we go any further, if you're enjoying this content, please like and subscribe so you can help us get the word out about these amazing people and businesses here in the Orlando area. Don't miss out on upcoming episodes and help out the show. Now let's get back to it. Um, I'm sure there's a million of them. Now you put me on the spot. I have to think about it. <laughs> but I think most of my stories are related toward me being able to um, help other people and so I'm trying to think of a really good example. Okay. Well, while you're thinking about that, how, an easier one, how did you go from being I member to now being an advocate uh, and uh, trying to spread the word? Yeah. So that transition was kind of funny because I used, I was doing my business and then I actually had another business at a, at a point where I was working for um, assisting hands home care and doing 
uh, business development for two franchises there, caregivers in the home. And so I did that in BNI too. And my husband would always kind of be like, I mean, oh, I've got to get my BNI work done. You know, I want to send some referrals to these people and I want to connect these other people. And this is really going to solve their problem. And and my husband would be like, why do you care so much? I mean, he, I think a lot of people expect you just be a member so that you can phone it in and have access and like everything's going to come to me. But I really embraced what it was all about. I enjoyed that. And so kind of then looking back, I'm like, ah, that's why I was so into it. it you know, I really enjoyed it. And so that led to me being, um, you know, I had to interview for this position and, but being somebody that really makes sense to go out and spread brand awareness and help others explore. It's not for everybody, obviously, sure. but sure. referral networking is a concept that is very important. Yeah. Um, how you yeah. go about doing that, people might have different structures and platforms, but the referral part of it is really important. And so I think it just kind of became a, a natural fit for me. Got it. You, you said your husband, wondered why you cared so much i'm also kind of curious where did that where did that uh deep conviction to to really put in that much work to send out referrals come from uh was it because you had seen the light and seen a different way or was it something else uh that that kind of pushed you to work that hard I think to make other yeah i think stuff? it's an innate thing that i mean a lot of people really have when you tap into that ability to give and how that feels to be a giver, mm -hmm. right? It just feels really great. Now, not that you want to be a doormat. It's supposed to be reciprocal, not necessarily from that exact person, but to come around within your success team um, when people see that you are that giver. But to embrace that philosophy of giving without expectation of getting back um, it, it feels good. We've heard people talk about gratitude and having a grateful heart. They're kind of all interconnected. And so wanting, it just feels really good to be like, Oh, I know the perfect person for you, or, Oh, I've got a, a great referral partner for you. or I've got a great contact. And the more activity you do and the more exposure you have and more relationships development you develop, the more you can connect people. And the goal is then for that to lead to thank you for closed business is what we call it for them, right? right. Not, right. we don't, I can see what revenue I generate for me as a business person, but what revenue I'm generating for other people is what's exciting and what we celebrate. So we really, people get excited when they're like, and we, you know, uh, Terry gave $40,000 and thank you for closed business, you know, to Christopher this month. And he's like, thank you so much, Terry. You know, um, it just really, I don't know. How can it not feel good? I don't know to, to see other people, you know, entrepreneurship is hard being a small to medium business owner, right? There's so much competition. We're in kind of a crazy time and this economy we're in right now, believe it or not, it's called um, a reputation economy, right? People are just kind of forget having to like, used to be you went and looked up three um, electricians called them all out, got three different quotes, right? Now people will go to, you know, like those next door apps for your neighborhood and, and they'll just put it on there or they'll just go straight to reviews, you know, when they Google something and read the review. So it's called kind of a reputation economy. And so it's, it's just a really great way to take advantage of the way people are doing business right now. And it's based on um, referrals and putting the right people together so that they can, support one another in the growth of their business. Yeah, it, it's so interesting. It's something that we talk about um, on the team a lot, the power of introduction, uh, that when you, you know, when you stand and you ask for business, there's, there's, a, there's a negative connotation to that. But when somebody introduces you, your ability to capture that business just gets so much better, especially if they say really nice and flattering things about you, which usually when we're recommending somebody to somebody else, then we usually lay it on pretty thick. At least I do. I really do like those people. I do believe in the service. Otherwise, I wouldn't attach my name to them, right? Well, so. exactly. You know, reputation goes both ways, you know, and that's why we say some, we have a specific way of, a, of defining a referral uh, because a lead is not a referral in our book. A lead is just basically a a cold lead with a name to blame attached to it, right? Because you don't really know that much about 
this lead necessarily. So in our definition, a referral is the person is in, in the market for your services. Two, the person knows they're in the market for your services. So let's say you see your neighbor struggling with back pain. You think they need a chiropractor, but you don't know that they agree they need a chiropractor, no. right? They Maybe they have some preconceived notions. Maybe their health plan doesn't cover it. Maybe they've had a bad experience. So just putting them automatically in contact with your chiropractor isn't necessarily a positive thing. So they have to know they're in the market. Then A, you have to have talked to that person about their need so that you know that. And you have to have talked to that person about your colleague you want to introduce them to, and they need to be expecting their call. And so then, yeah, when you can do that email, three-way text, three-way call, even a coffee meetup where you introduce everybody and edify everybody, you skip a lot of stuff. Do you want some stats? Let's see. Referrals lead to a 38% faster closed deal than leads from other sources. This is really amazing. And then another one is that uh, referrals, uh, the limited value, the lifetime value of a referred customer is 25% higher than that of other customers. Things like that are just, you know, they're based in numbers. Referred customers have a 37% higher retention rate than other customers. So it becomes all about efficiency and effectiveness. You want to do what you do. You want to do it well. And you want to do it in front of more people. You want that turn, right, that, that you know, dramatically kind of increases the how quickly you can close the deal and provide the services and so that you can go and do it with the next person. So it makes it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. And asking for referrals is not the way to go. <laughs> it's uh, interesting. You, uh, you, you made mention that being a business owner is hard. What did you find about being a solo solopreneur the hardest thing? There's so many aspects to it. I'm just so impressed and blown away by people that, you know, make this successful and you watch their growth for BNI even, but you know, there's so many components, you know, how are you facing the world? You know, what does your website look like? Are there automations? Are there optimizations of that? Your social media, your, your networking, then you've got to keep your books and you've got to pay your taxes. And then you've got to keep, you know, we've got a plan for contingencies and it's just a lot. And when you come from the perspective that I did, which was corporate, you show up, you sit at your desk, you do your job, you get your paycheck, you go home. It's so much more, you know what I mean? It really is. And then when you add on the level of having, you know, employees and starting to scale up a little bit, the level of responsibility you feel just goes through the roof, you know, and people are exploring things like podcasts and adding new skill sets. And it may be people that, you know, never in a million years thought that they were going to be in front of a camera on a podcast, but here they are in the name of their business, you know? So, I mean, I I think a lot of it's, it's difficult um, because when you usually get into a business, you're a realtor, right? You got into, tell me, what, what do you love the most about being a realtor? Oh man. Uh, so I, I loved the fact that I was going to be in charge of my calendar and my clock. Right. And I was willing to and do so anything. That's a hard thing for people to too. It, right. But, yeah. uh, you know, I also had to realize that, uh, if I was going to be in charge of it, I was going to be responsible for it. Uh, and so uh, I, sometimes I still have to do what I have. I still have a job, right? Yeah. But now my, my boss is a bigger jerk because he makes me work all the time. But, uh, <laughs> but it's different now because I, I, can, I, ha- I can make a decision to not show up. Uh, but it also means when I don't show up, I don't get paid. So, uh, you know, for me, I, I did it because of that. And I, I love real estate. But the reason I became a realtor was because I wanted to be in control of my, my clock. But I love real sure. estate and I love helping people. I've always enjoyed that. Um, but and- you didn't come become a realtor because you wanted to sit in a room and call a bunch of leads, right? That wasn't the thing you're like, oh, I can't wait to do that. No, right? and I you don't. Know? I never have, right? It's just, it's, that's not part, you know, I designed my business around the type of work I wanted to do. So it was a little bit right. different, but, and I encourage everyone to do the same, but, but yeah, I mean, um, it, it is, it is challenging. I did, I definitely did not become a realtor to become an accountant and to become a bookkeeper. I, you know, it's not stuff I want to do. I, now I try to hire other people to do all of that stuff. Right. So, uh, because again, I like to focus on doing the things I like to do like this. I like doing this, right. I don't edit this video. 
Uh, my editing team will take care of it and they're awesome. So thank you uh, to them. Shout out. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, anyways, uh, what having to do all the things is what was challenging. Was there one thing that you found to just be the one thing you didn't want to do when you were running your, your own business or operating as a solopreneur? Hey, before we go any further, if you're enjoying this content, please like, and subscribe so you can help us get the word out about these amazing people and businesses here in the Orlando area. Don't miss out on upcoming episodes and help out the show. Now let's get back to it. Yeah, for me, it was the bookkeeping. I didn't, I didn't love tracking all of that stuff. And I wasn't at the point where I could hire someone to do. And so you would put it off and then you'd have to be like, oh, trying to remember and, you know, putting, you know, everything in, in, you know, the right place, the right time. And, and so you do find things like apps and technology that can help sure. you tremendously yeah. um, with those parts of the business. But, um, and, and the other part I didn't enjoy was going out and finding the business necessarily. Right. I wanted it to happen organically and that, that takes more time. Right. And so sometimes right. you have that, tr you know, trouble is that you don't, do you have the time to wait for those things to happen, what needs to happen now? How do you make that happen? Yeah. But, um, it's, it's interesting. It, it, it's a lot of fun though, to be able to, I mean, luckily for me, people was the one part I really liked, but you know, it's interesting. Introverts are very, very good at networking. They can have excellent uh, results and outcomes because they are so naturally good at asking questions and letting the other person talk. And therefore they learn more about how they can help that person. Right. And they learn more about, you know, what they can do to be of service to them. So a lot of times people are like, oh, I'm an introvert. It's not for me. And you do have to develop some skill sets where you can get up in front of a group of people and share 60 seconds about, you know, how to how to look for a referral for you. But that's the other thing we do in BNI is we train people a through the relationship building that we're very intentional intentional about we create the want the desire to help somebody because you have lots of friends and family that like know like and trust you but doesn't necessarily mean their radar is up and they're trying to send you business every day because they're thinking about their own business right so it has to be a business relationship where they decide they want to help you and i literally have people in my chapter they're like i'm so excited about your new job i, I can't wait i'm going to do everything i can to help you succeed you know, and so that's just a great feeling. And then the other thing is, is you have to train them and teach them how to find business for you. What are they looking for? What triggers are they listening for? What things are they wanting people to, to hear people say? And then it's not even stops at that. We train people now. Well, okay, I know he needs a realtor, but how do I, what do I say? Because, you know, if I'm an HVAC guy, I might not know exactly how to introduce Tyler and, and why he should talk to Tyler versus the 12 other realtors that person may know. So that's the training, you know, that goes in and the skill sets that get developed. But yeah, it's uh, introverts are natural, um, at really naturally good at listening. Yeah, I I can agree. Uh, introverts tend to ask better questions. Extroverts uh, just like to talk. Uh, and I'm guilty <laughs> of that. So uh, uh, if people wanted to learn more about BNI and how they could potentially get involved, what would be the best thing for them to do? Sure. Well, there's a couple things they can do. I mean, obviously they can always reach out to me if they're within our central Florida region here. Um, and I don't mind sharing my cell phone numbers, 317-657-6361. And my email is christine at bniorl.com. Orlando. And so, but there's also a website, um, www.bniorl.com. And that has a ton of information there. They have a place where you can click on find a chapter. Um, they also have, if you kind of get into their little deeper, where you can do an advanced chapter search. The thing that's really interesting um, about certain classifications, though, is that they are full because one of our um, approaches that makes us unique is that we only allow one person per profession or industry. So we only have one residential realtor. We only have one insurance, PNC insurance person, one mortgage lender, one um, 
financial advisor. And those seats tend to be super full. Um, for example, we have no openings for realtors right now. We have one out of 37, 40 chapters for a mortgage lender. So that's where I come in. Part of my job is to launch new chapters. And so we, we have a standing meeting every Monday um, at noon on Zoom for people if they just want to explore what that might entail. And I take them through 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 the basics and then they want to move forward. I partner with them to launch a new chapter and stick with them every step of the way until they're a fully chartered, ready to go chapter. But. Well, very cool. Yeah, I've I've been told in the uh, a lot in the past that realtor seats are usually almost always taken, and so if you're a realtor and you want to do BNI, you have to start your own chapter. Uh, but what a great opportunity to create some incredible relationships and meet right, and that's kind of the unique world. thing about a startup. You're exactly right. Is that you can pick and choose kind of your initial core group of people. Um, with strategy and intentionality, and then it just kind of grows organically from there. So it can be very, and it's not that much more work, really. It's basically a weekly commitment, just like with BNI. And actually, we've done studies on that. Referrals decrease by 50% if you don't meet weekly. Wow. So, um, yeah, people are like, weekly? I'm like, yes, it makes all the difference um, in the world for being top of mind with people. But um, so launching a chapter, you have, you know, you still just get together as a group weekly and as you expand your numbers and you just focus on inviting the right people into the room. And that's that's the only added thing that you're doing other than you're already, if you joined a chapter, you'd be meeting weekly too. Right. So, and inviting right. people, but yeah, you're right. They have a thing about, they say about realtors, the realtor has to like re retire, die, move out of state, open up a seat. And then what happens because you know what the number is here? I'll share it with you. I think 195,647 active realtors in, in Florida. So, um, <laughs> So the minute, like, I won't even find out as the market development manager because the people, other people in that chapter are immediately inviting people to come interview um, to take that seat. And they might have you know, 20 people interviewed yeah. at the same spot. So yeah, it is it is a little challenging, but. Well, very cool. Well, um, Christine, do you read, do you read any books? Do you have any books that you've read recently that you would recommend somebody check out? Yes, I do. Right now I'm reading, oh gosh, what's it called? Um, hi, shoot, I want to run and get it. High Performance Habits, something like that. Okay. And um, it's an excellent book. And what I like about it is because it's not all just focused on the typical time blocking and time management, and which is obviously if you can't read between the lines of thing, I probably struggle with the most. But, um, but it also looks at habits that affect your business that are not just sitting at your computer or at your desk, right? They're habits about your life too, in terms of um, things like creating necessity and energy and other things that are needed to be a high performer. So I really like that book. One of the very first books, so I'm a, I'm a convert to personal development and actually reading. <laughs> so I didn't used to, you know, corporate me was like, I, I mean, my inbox, I didn't have time to read anything outside of what was in my inbox and even struggled with that. So, and I just wasn't a reader. And then all of a sudden I did start getting more into this and now I'm fairly addicted to it because I just, there's always something you can learn and take away. But my very first book I read, I was walking through an airport and never do this. Why do you buy a book in an airport? They're so expensive. But I bought this book called Story Brand by Donald Miller. Yep. Are you familiar with that? Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm familiar with his work. Yeah, changed my life. I just really related to that. And for this person that was networking all wrong, it really helped me, you know, even the concept that just most salient concept that we're not the heroes to our clients. You know, you're the guide that's letting them be the hero in their story, right? And there's typically a villain and, you know, like, and, and, and how you're helping them become their own hero um, and all the components of what that story looks like, that, that really stayed with me. So I really thought it was a great book. Awesome. Great tip. I've had somebody else mention it, but they never went through kind of what they got out of it. So appreciate you sharing that. Yeah, it likens, um, 
business to like a movie script or a novel, right? And all the components you have in that. And so, and how you develop the characters and who the characters are. And that when you're telling a story, if you're going to be, there's usually a guide, you know, that's the sidekick and the hero and the villain. So let's say we're talking about nutritional um, supplements and natural holistic solutions for your health, you know, so the villain might be pharmaceutical companies, right? And you want them to be the hero in the life. They found a solution that's helping them alleviate their pain. And you're just the guy presenting options to them and helping them, you know, find their way to their solution. So yeah. very cool. People much very rather cool. be a hero than have somebody else be their hero. Yeah. Uh, any final thoughts you'd like to share with our audience about networking or being a business owner? Uh, let's see. Final thoughts. I mean, the thing about networking is just don't be me, me, how I was at the beginning, <laughs> you know, just, I want, because being a business owner is so tough and your time is so, so valuable. You want to get return on your investment for your networking. Um, and so yes, you might meet people, but the return on the investment, if you have, I mean, I can fill a trash can full of business cards. I mean, there's so many business cards and you don't even remember who they were, or what it was from, unless you're really amazing at follow up, which is another important thing. But so choose your networking wisely, choose networking that is based on referrals to some extent so that you can be sure to get that return on your time investment really and, and go deep not wide. Better to have relationships where people want to help you succeed um, that are, are that are deeper, more meaningful relationships than a whole bunch of surface contacts um, that aren't going to really um, have that desire to help you. So that's the, the biggest takeaway, I think. Um, I would love for people to understand. There are five different ways, five different types of networks, and they all have value. You have social networks, let's say you have a hobby, and you're all into that hobby together. Or like for me, I'm a Gulf War veteran. I, you know, might do some veterans um, uh, networking that's mostly social. There's altruistic networking where you have a cause or you're always, you know, giving back to the community. There's networking that's part of an association, right, where you're all like homogenous, sure. but that has its benefits sure. and needs too for education and for you know, collaboration and things. And there's open networking, which is more like your chambers where, and then the unfortunate thing, I mean, those are amazing ways to meet new people. Absolutely. Especially in terms of community, depending on how far you want your reach to be. But again, if somebody comes this week and not next week and you came this week and met them, but they weren't here, but then the time they show up, you're not there. I mean, four weeks, four months might go by. I'm sorry. I should say weeks. I should say months might go by before you see them again. So, um, but those are open and then closed is a style like um, a platform like BNI. So where you have that intentionality and accountability. So very cool. Awesome. Well, hey, thanks for being here today. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll uh, share all your information on the podcast. And uh, thanks for sharing with us about networking. And hopefully we'll see you around. And thank you to all of our audience members that were listening today. We'll see you around Central Florida. Thanks so much, Tyler. Really appreciate you. Bye.